Welcome to another edition of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. I'm your host and the man behind the mic, K-Sap. And today, man, we got a highly coveted sophomore out of St. Mary's High School in New York. She's going to grace the presence of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. Um, but before I bring her on, um, she is a sophomore. Um, she's about six feet. She got a six, eight wingspan. And she's doing big things for St. Mary's High School out of New York. Um, her name is Destiny Robinson, and she's poised to have a breakout year going into her junior year. But before I bring her on the stage, I just want to give you all a little glimpse on who we're going to be talking to today. So roll the footage. Nice utilize of the left hand. Hustles back on defense. A nice vision. Passing skills is elite. I like the way she sealed her man out, got to the cup with the left hand. See, a lot of, you know, sophomores in high school really don't use their left hand, but it's, oh, look, look, mid-range game. Mm, buckets. Hustles back down court. Mm, teammates looking for another mid-range game. Mm. Mm, good rebound. Rebound put back. Mm, stayed with the play, got the rebound. Mm, she pushing the ball up the court. Mm, got there with the left. Mm, jumper. Ooh. Man, y'all seen that footage right there, man. That's some good footage from a sophomore in high school. And like I said, basically a lot of sophomores don't use their left hand. And basically she used her left hand, and that's impressive. But without further ado, what we're going to do, we're going to bring Miss Destiny Robinson to the stage. Welcome in, Destiny. Hi, thank you for having me. Hey, not a problem, man. So tell the people a little bit about yourself. So I'm from Queens. I'm from Corona. Um, I've only been playing for four years. I've been playing since seventh grade. Um, I train every day. My dad trains me. Um, I'm very good on defense. I can guard any position. I I have good ball handling skills. I don't I don't post. I don't play the big even though I'm pretty tall. I can switch any I can switch to any position that I'm given. Well, that's great. So, basically you say um just because you're tall, you say you don't play down on the post. Now, the position you play, what what are you more comfortable at playing at? Like you said, you don't post up. But what are you comfortable at playing? Do you play the guard, the off guard, or what? What do you feel comfortable playing at? I'm. I feel like my strongest position playing at is at the perimeter, because like I said, I can attack the basket, one dribble. It's really easy. I can use my length to get blow past people and things like that. Yeah, I've seen that in the footage. Um, I've seen that you utilize your left hand a lot. Is that your strong side or you prefer to go left or is that something the defense gives you? The defense gives me left. So I take that. Um, I take what they give me and I just use it. I go along with it. I'm a righty, but I would say I'm pretty good. I'm better with my left hand. So that, that you know, it's crazy that you said that because when I was growing up, a lot of I, I'm right handed myself. And a lot of people say, man, you utilize your left like you're left handed. You know, I. I was always honed in on being ambidextrous, you know, going right and left. And and like I tell my kids, because I'm a coach right now, and I tell my kids, you take what the defense gives you. If they plan you to go left, go left. You know what I'm saying? Show them that you can go left. And it's impressive from the footage that I've seen with you that you do go left and you can finish with your left. And like you said, with your length, and you said you get the ball, you can drive by. Now, 
growing up, you said you've been playing since you um, seventh grade. Yes. What inspired you to play basketball? I would say my mom inspired me to play basketball because she always told me how in high school she would she would win games, she would win trophies, win varsity jackets, and I wanted to be a part of that. And then also my dad, he w he was a multi sport athlete, so I wanted to follow in my parents' footsteps. Oh, that's great, man. That's a great honor, man. So with that being said, so the way you said that so eloquently, I take it that your mom is your biggest inspiration into playing basketball. Yes. Okay. Now, who do you now who do you compare your game toward? Is there any who well, matter of fact, who is your favorite player and who do you patent your game after? I would say my favorite player is Brianna Stewart. And I feel like we resemble each other because we have we both have height to each other. We're not the tallest people, but we both have height. And she isn't just used for a post player. Like she can shoot in the perimeter. She can drive using her length. And I feel like we both have something in common and we I resemble her. Yeah, I, I can see the comparisons because, you know, Brianna Stewart, she really don't play down in the post. Um, she's a perimeter player. She got a nice jump shot. And also with her length, she can blow by people. So, yep. you know, your sophomore year, um, you just came out of a tournament. And I think that you posted on your IG that y'all won that tournament. So yep. in that tournament, how do you think you fared in that tournament? Um, I think I led my team to victory by my defense because defense turns into offense. You get a steal. You can go score. Um, I was scoring – Whenever we were down, if if we if we were down, I was scoring, getting my team back up. I was encouraging them to I was getting them hyped so they can feel that energy to get into get back into the game. OK, so on your team. So let me let me ask you this. So as a sophomore, is there any pressure on you to rise to it to the occasion? Do your do your teammates look for you as the leader of the team? Yes, my teammates look for me as the leader. Um, we need someone to step up and take that leadership role, and I feel like that will. I still, I still, I stepped up and I took that role to, you know, help my team. And with that being said, now going into your junior year, what is your expectations from yourself and from your team going into your junior year? Um, my expectations, I would say for myself is to play a hundred every single time. Um, if things go wrong, you know, next play. And I feel like my expectation for myself would also be to like that leadership role also comes in, even though I'm also, I'm a sophomore, yeah. we're going to be a junior and there's also seniors on the team. You doesn't matter your age you can still be a leader no matter what so do you want to take on that leadership role and be more vocal with your team and be a locker room presence where you can get the girls together and they can follow your lead so going into your junior year do you want to take on more responsibility as being that vocal leader and that team leader yes i would want to do that off the court i would say that i'm like a pretty quiet person but when i'm on the court all that energy builds up and it fires me to speak and communicate with everyone. So with that being said, so are you more of a, are you more of a, a like a vocal leader or you going to let your play do the leading? I would say both. Cause you know, I like to encourage people to like, if they make a mistake, let's go get it back next one. And then also, if I see my team's not scoring, I would call for the ball, get it, and keep on scoring. So that kind of puts trust in my teammates so they can trust me to score whenever we need it. So basically, the way you said that, so you, I know you've heard of the mentality of the Mamba mentality. So yeah. you have that Mamba mentality where if your team needs a bucket, you like, hey, give me the ball. I'm going to deliver. Yes. So where did you get that confidence in your game to, you know, display that? 
Um, I feel like I've, I think practicing, practicing more and more has made me gain that confidence to, you know, provide, like take the last shot in case okay. we needed it or, you know, help the team up. That's great. So with that being said, with everything that you said, um, going into your um, junior year, what are some of the things that you think that you need to work on to improve as a basketball player? So I would say I would need to work on my IQ a little, but it's getting better. Okay. I would say that because there are times in the game where I would pass it, but then like I have an open lane myself and vice versa. Like I would take, I would take the layup or shoot it or do whatever goes in or not. And the better option would be to kick it off to a more open shot. So I think working on that would be, I would need to work on that more. And see, with that being said, like you said, you have that mama mentality. See, the mama mentality is, you know, that persona is always to score first, right? Yes. And, you know, it's some, you know, fine lines and some wiggle rooms with that mom, mama mentality. Because I always tell people, you can have the mama mentality in both ways. The mama mentality in scoring, the mama mentality in facilitating, getting your teammates off. Similar to what LeBron James does. You know what I'm saying? He he don't have that mamba mentality the way people say that he should have that killer instinct like Jordan and, and Kobe. It's a difference in the way LeBron does it. He has it in all facets of the game where he can score the last shot, but he can facilitate to the open person. And that's when you said the basketball IQ comes in because you want to get the best possible shot to win the game if your team is in that situation to win the game. And I like the way you said that you're trying to develop that, the IQ where you know where your teammates are on the floor, but you know you can get a shot when you want. But your job is to help your teammates out, put them in position to score, and we all can celebrate. So that's good that at a young age that you're developing that, you know, mentality See, a lot of people always want to get on the basketball court and be like, I just want to go score and not worried about nobody else trying to get nobody involved. But basketball is a team game. So it's good that you say that you don't want to play in the post, but if you have to play in the post, you can do it. Yeah. But also you want to get you want to facilitate. You want to get your teammates involved. So when I said that to say this is you're developing – you know, a mindset where I want to get everybody involved. I just don't want to be the solo act. And that's impressive. So when you when you have that kind of mentality and when you convey that off to your teammates, your teammates are going to look at you like she's a team player. But like you said, if you need to go get a bucket when your team is down, give me the ball. Let me get a bucket. Let, let me get us going. So your expectations for your team – as a team going into your junior year, what are the expectations of your team? Um, the expectation is to win, obviously, but to win smartly. Like, we need to, you know, like I said, pass the ball whenever. Like, look for that open person, play defense all the time, play 100 every single second of the game. Doesn't matter if we're up or down. Play, play hard the whole time. Yeah. Okay, and that's great. So as a sophomore, I know a lot of people, you know, colleges be looking at athletes at a young age, starting in their freshman year on on the way up. Have you gotten any looks from any colleges, um, any interest in people writing your parents saying, hey, I want to come take a look at your daughter play? Um, yes, I have been getting off. I have been getting interest and calls from colleges. And that's great. So the dream scenario, um, give me your dream scenario going off to play college. What would be your dream scenario? Hmm. My dream would be to play not that far away from home, but, but pretty far. Um, I'll be staying there, um, playing college basketball. Yes. And I think 
I would want to major in in sports media or art. Okay, that's great. So when we're talking about these colleges, um, just go and spit a few colleges out there that that you would love to play for. Um. Uh, I don't know at the moment. I'm like, gonna... man, put it, put it out there. <laughs> put it out there. I mean, this this podcast is going to go out to the masses, so put it out there. Mm, I'm not sure. I, my, so I there's really... no school that you say, hey, I would love to play for that school. Mm, no, I mean, I've been getting looks look from great schools, but like, I don't have like a specific school that i would want to go to yeah i haven't been thinking about that you haven't been thinking about that not too you're not thinking too far down the line so let me ask you this um as being a basketball player i know you watch the sport who's your favorite college basketball team hmm it would probably be yukon or south carolina so with that being said wouldn't that be one Two of the schools that you would love to play for? True, yeah. Okay, put it out there. Yeah. Put it out there. I mean, you you mentioned Brianna Stewart's name early in the in the conversation, right? What school did she go come from? I'm not sure. She came from UConn. Oh. Now, South Carolina, you know, they just won the national championship. Dawn Staley, you know what I'm saying, as the head coach. You know, they had Carmilla Cardosa. You know, Aaliyah Boston came from that school. Yes, Um, I know. Also, Asia Wilson. So, I mean, there's great names. I mean, if you can have your name attached to them greats, that would be a good thing. But it's very commendable because of the fact that being a sophomore, you know, not looking too far down the road, you know what I'm saying? You got your, you know, everything's open right now because like I said, you know, going into your junior year, you want to have a breakout year and then that's when the floodgates are going to open. You know right. what I'm saying? If you keep doing the things that you're doing from the footage that I've seen, I mean, it's going to be a lot of schools knocking at your door and your parents are going to be like, they're going to have to keep some of these people away because I remember when I, when I was in high school and I was going through the recruiting process, I mean, it it got it, it got hectic. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's certain things that you know my mailbox was filled, man. I had boxes of letters where some of the envelopes I didn't even open. You know what I'm saying? It, it's some schools that I just didn't even entertain. You know, I just kept the envelopes closed, never opened them. You know what I'm saying? Because I had my you know sights set on you know a few schools. You know, so. That's why I was asking you, you know, your dream scenario, what schools would you love to play? Because there's going to be schools that you probably never heard of that's going to be knocking at your door, sending you letters, and you might not even open up that envelope. It might just go in a box like, you know, that's that's filed that to the side, you know what I'm saying? But it's impressive. It seems like you got a good head on your shoulder. It seems like you know what you want. It seems like you know what you need to work on, you know, going into your junior year, and that's impressive. So let the let the people know that don't know you out here when they see this podcast. Give us three fun facts about Destiny Robinson. Hmm. Three fun facts. I would say. I would say I'm, fun fact, I'm a hard worker. I'm very physical. Um, what's it called? Three fun facts. I don't, um, I don't really know. I don't. You're a hard worker. What else? Um, I'm a hard worker. I've 
I would say, even though I mentioned this already, I've only been playing for four years. Okay. Because like some, some people are surprised that I'm yeah. a quick learner. You develop quick. Yeah. And then I'm an artist. I'm really good at drawing. Okay. And I was going to, I was going to ask you the next question outside of basketball. What do you like to do on your free time? On my free time, I like to draw. And whenever I'm not playing basketball or doing something school related, I'm always drawing. Okay, that's great. That's great. So last question I got for you before I let you go. Name name at least two things people don't know about Destiny Robinson. Um two things people don't know about me. Uh, two things people don't know about me is uh, two things people don't know about me. Uh, two things people don't know about me. Um, I would say when I would say is people don't know that. I could guard any position. Okay. And another one is and then I don't know one more. Just I tell them one another thing that people probably don't know about you is you don't play in the post, but you can play in the post. Hey, another thing people don't know about me is I don't play in the post, but I could if I have the dis disadvantage. There you go. There you go. And that's great. So is there anything that you would like to tell the people out there or the young kids that's going to be watching? Um, would you like to, you know, tell them anything? Um, I would say to play hard every second that you get because you never know who's watching you. Anyone could be watching at any moment. Perfect. Perfect. And that, and that's a great message from destiny Robinson. Well, um, guys, um, that's going to be our time for the day. And I appreciate destiny Robinson and all her time that she's took and she graced the presence of the simply ball dropping podcast. And that's going to wrap up another episode of the simply ball dropping podcast. I'm your host and the man behind the mic K sap. We're going to catch you on the next one. Deuces. Thanks for listening to the Simply Ball Drop-In Podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share on all major platforms. I'm really the, I'm the, that's all, folks.